Good morning, East Castle Place. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody has their favorite cup of coffee near them. I, uh, of course, treated myself this morning uh, to an iced coffee from Starbucks. That weather really turned on us, but uh, fun fact, I drink iced coffee throughout the year, whether it's negative 50 degrees or 150 degrees. So, with that, join me in the first sip. All right, we have our first... Uh, I'm reading my cup, that first sip feeling. Um, all right. Well, uh, a lot to discuss this morning. Uh, first and foremost, regarding COVID-19, and then other um, operational updates that I want to provide you um, to, uh, to keep you as updated as possible. Throughout this entire time of COVID-19, uh, since unfortunately I've had to do this in my office without the live studio audience, um, transparency has been key. And so communication has been key. I know it hasn't been perfect. I know that there's been questions that have come uh, from it and I appreciate that feedback that I, I receive from you as residents. Please continue to do that. I share the information with you, again, not to instill uh, fear, not to instill um, the what ifs, the what are we doing, how did we get here, but truly just to keep you as residents informed. Um, I, I don't ask that, you know, you I, I share this with you to make you feel sorry for me or to feel sorry for for the situation. I mean, we're all going through this. We're all going through it individually inside of East Castle Place and outside. I know it's affecting all of us um, and it's difficult. And, and so I only share that with you to keep you informed. Um, and hopefully the information uh, continues to, to be that informational um, because again, we're all in this together. I wanna start with the uh, the executive recommendation, I believe is what it's being called, that came over uh, from Governor Evers' office last evening. Uh, in Governor Evers' plea to Wisconsin to, to fight against COVID-19 and mitigating uh, the, the gatherings and uh, to really stay at home uh, and uh, only going out for essential visits. Now, I haven't been able to dive too, too deep into it, but I believe it is a recommendation, not necessarily an order. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, that is not going on deaf ears uh, and something that, that we, we at East Castle Place obviously uh, have been working through. Um, as many of you know, we've been uh, more stringent throughout the last eight months, most likely than any business uh, has been, um, but we need to continue that. There's also a piece of this that uh, is, is important for the overall health and wellness of, of our resident population at large. And of course, that's the socialization, the, the fitness, uh, the, the, the spiritual pieces. So uh, there, there's a couple things that, that I want to present to you, and I'll, I'll draft this in the memo as well that you'll see uh, to update you. And so this week, um, we, we reopened the fitness center and we resumed some very small group activities. The fitness center is limited hours along with the pool, um, and I believe that uh, we have one, maybe two individuals socially distanced, masked in that fitness center, with Willie and Alice there um, during those times. I wanna keep that fitness center open, but I have to urge you to make sure you sign up. Sign up is the only way I'm, we're going to be able to keep the fitness center open. And if we have uh, residents that are not compliant with that, or we're seeing uh, residents not wearing masks or adhering to the cleaning protocols, we will have to shut that down. But I wanna give us the opportunity to keep that area open as I know the fitness center and the pool are very important to many of you. And I wanna give the, you that as an outlet. I, I know this morning when I came in, it was windy, it was 35 degrees, uh, it is November, so it's anticipated, and I think we got lucky over the last week when on Monday it was 70 degrees. Welcome to Wisconsin, right? So, um, that fitness center I do want to look to remain open. The one area I need to, to reconsider is really that small group activities, um, and there's two areas that I do want to remain open from a spirituality standpoint, and that is the church service and the Catholic Mass. 
The reason for that is it's very, very small group and I feel comfortable with the social distancing that we do have going on and the protocols we have in place. So again, those two areas will remain open. However, the small group committees and small groups that uh, we, we started with this week, I'm going to take a step back and, and I'm going to put a temporary pause on those again. Uh, I hate doing that, um, but it is a moment in time and that's the decision that, that we have to make. It's not an independent living. You saw in my email or memo last week, we had one individual in independent living that did have it. Now I'm fortunate to say that this resident um, has recovered, is, is, in, is in good spirits and, and doing well. Again, this resident is in the Bradford Terrace area. We know that there was a direct exposure at an outside appointment. With that being said, um, we, we continue our twice a week testing, which I think in the memo, uh, and thank you uh, to Mr. Fry for pointing this out to me, um, I said bi-weekly, which again, uh, I, I got, con you know, the bi-weekly to me is twice a week. That's obviously not the definition. Bi-weekly is actually twice a month every other week. So we are doing testing twice a week for our residents in the health center, assisted living, and memory care area, as well as our staff. So on a given week, we're doing close to 400 tests. Um, that includes residents and staff, um, usually roughly 200 to 220, um, 200 to 210 given day uh, on Tuesday and then again on Friday. Through that, we found some things. We continue to find uh, cases of positive COVID-19. Uh, this week, uh, yesterday, uh, we found three residents that tested positive, one in our health center, two in our water tower. Um, again, that, that is a concern, um, but we also know that um, we've also had staff members uh, through our testing process that uh, have potentially brought this uh, to the community as much as protection and PPE that we're wearing. Um, so we also found two employees. So a total of five individuals yesterday out of the 200. Um, you know, that's still 195 case uh, tests that came back negative, which is good. Um, it still shows that our protocols are, are in place. But again, the spread of COVID-19 and obviously what Wisconsin's going through um, continue to be a concern. And so that's why we continue to take the steps to be proactive to the best of our ability. Um, I know that there's uh, uh, ideas and thoughts out there that we're not doing enough. I know that there's also this, this side that, you know, we're, we're doing too much and, and we need to continue life. So um, it's that wonderful gray area that I know I've spoken about to, to all of you on a number of occasions. And we're still in that. Um, again, this moment in time, uh, this moment has been longer than, than anybody I think has anticipated and we're not through it. Um, the tough part is we're, we're heading into a part of the season that uh, we need to figure out how to, to, how to acclimate and, and how to adjust and I can promise you, uh, your group of directors and, and your staff are vigilantly preparing to, to figure out how to, how to make these uh, holiday season. Um, the best that it can be here at East Castle Place. And I don't want to I don't want to focus on that today. We still have a couple weeks, but do know I want to assure you that plans are in place and, and we will uh, celebrate to the best that we can, obviously, in the situation that we're in. And so again, um, that's uh, you know, I, I, I guess I share that with you because I want everybody also to stay optimistic. Um, I want there to, to feel that, you know, there, there is still that, I don't know, normality isn't necessarily a term that I want to use because nothing is normal right now, but there is that hindsight, I, I, there is that, uh, that look forward that we need to continue to do because we can get really caught up in the here and now and get focused on, on what's not going right. And that's, that's ultimately something that is my responsibility to take on. Um, and it's your responsibility as residents to look forward and to figure out uh, what other outlets um, we can utilize to continue to fight COVID-19. So um, I, I share this with you again to be as transparent as possible. Um, you will see this in the memo forthcoming. Um, I also, again, these masks, I have to encourage all of you um, at times, I, I do see 
you know, residents wearing it and maybe they're in the in a space where they're not in close proximity with people and we're taking the masks down, I need you to keep the masks up to the best of your ability um, unless you are truly isolated. The other thing is I need you to share any of your symptoms that you are experiencing uh, with Teresa or the front desk so that we can route that appropriately. If you are feeling under the weather, please let us know. Um, we're here for you just as we have been this entire time. Uh, and we'll get through this. We will get through this too. Um, <laughs> I, I know that that's sometimes tough to see. Um, trust me, I know. Um, it, it's easy to get bogged down uh, on the, the, the news that's being shared uh, of the rise in COVID cases, the rise in deaths, uh, what we have here at East Castle Place and, and what is, is a rise. Um, now we, we've done a nice job to try and mitigate that um, and again, 195 out of the 200 plus tests that were, were done yesterday are negative. So we take some solace in that. Um, but we also have employees that are out because uh, they, they've tested negative, but they have a, a loved one that's in the home that uh, has tested positive. And so we put them through our series of tests, but unfortunately they're being held out of work. Uh, and the, many of them are asymptomatic. Some are symptomatic and they're working through that and still testing negative, so there's something else there. But for the abundance of caution, um, we, that's another protocol that we've had in place now for over two and a half months. And so, again, this is a, still a very fluid situation. Um, you know, I, I come in each day um, and, and I've always said I thrive on change and I thrive on, on kind of the unknown. And, and boy, is that being tested right now. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, we, we make decisions. Um, I make decisions for the community, uh, obviously not on my own, but with the assistance of our medical director, the CDC, the, the other, the Wisconsin Department of Health, um, as well as LCS to, to uh, navigate those decisions to the best of our abilities. Um, and again, there is no right answer, uh, which is tough for me because I always like to to you know, find a problem, find a solution, and and move forward. Uh, but this obviously has been a little bit different as well. So do know that your director team, the staff, myself, uh, Lindsay, are all very, very committed to remaining vigilant in this fight against COVID-19, and we're here for you. Um, so please feel free to give me a call, shoot me an email. Um, the words of encouragement are incredible. Um, we've actually also had so, some tough times in the health center with uh, residents passing away. Uh, some due to COVID, others not to COVID. Um, and at the end of the day, um, a, a loved one passing away is difficult. But I can assure you that the staff upstairs are, are doing everything they can to uh, take care and make sure that they're comfortable. Um, in all of that and, and um, being able to, uh, to, you know, have that, those last moments to be as comfortable as possible. But I want to focus on that. Um, again, that's just part of the transparency I want to share with you today. Uh, I, I also want to, to share the, the positives um, and the successes we've had. Again, I go back to, you know, we still have a very high negative rate, which is great for the community at large. You know, we're in that 5% range. Again, two months ago, we were at zero. Um, so obviously that's, that's, a, that's an increase, but then I look to Wisconsin and, and the cases that are on the rise there. And of course, that goes back to Governor Evers' uh, you know, recommendation, mandate. And so um, I do need to look further into that. Obviously that happened about 5.30, 6 o'clock last night. Um, but I'll filter through that and again, hopefully be able to, to better spell that out in the memo forthcoming. The other positives, you have a great team. Uh, the, the group of employees is, is the best I've ever worked with. Um, they are here each and every day to take care of and provide services to you. They're sometimes doing the job of two people because their fellow teammate is, is out, um, whether that's with COVID or another reason. Um, the team still does receive days off. We have to uh, paid time off uh, because that, 
unfortunately, we could all be here seven days a week, um, and, and that would burn a lot of individuals out and for the long term not, not help us. But the successes and the willingness to pick up those pieces are, are incredible. Um, and so again, if you see a housekeeper, if you see a maintenance individual, if you see a nurse or a CNA or the front desk or, or your community life team, please, I, I encourage you to encourage them. We're here for you. I know you're here for us. That's what makes East Castle Place the best community in Milwaukee. So this too uh, shall pass. It's tough to say that because I know that, uh, you know, we've been doing this for so long, uh, but it will. It, it's, uh, you know, I was talking to my sister on the way into work. She, she works at UW Health Hospital as a nurse practitioner. and She was sharing, you know, kind of the things that they're going through at the hospital level. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, I take solace in, in the faith I have, um, and, and that's important to me. And I hope you also find solace in, in whatever it is that you find um, that solace in. Um, and so, again, everybody needs that. Um, and uh, again, we'll get through this. All right, so that's a COVID-19 update. I'm going to take a sip. That was a lot to take in. And uh, all right. What else is on the docket today? Thank you to all those that voted. Uh, for the chairs, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you also to all those that did vote uh, in using your uh, amazing US American, US of A right that we have to vote. Um, again, I'm not getting into the political piece of this. That's not what it is. Just want to say uh, thank you and I hope you were able to. But also, now I'm going to East Castle Place. Thank you for voting for the chairs. Uh, we had a resounding response. Um, I, I think we could have maybe cleared that up a little bit. We know the style that we're going to get. Um, I believe it's that dark gray chair. Um, so if you voted for that, thank you. Uh, we are looking at the colors. Um, so not necessarily that dark gray. Something that's going to better match in Lindsay Hall. Probably in the more of that burgundy type of line. We're working with our provider or our supplier, direct supply rather. Um, to, to give us the option. So um, once those chairs are ordered, um, it will take, unfortunately due to COVID, probably eight to 12 weeks uh, to receive those chairs. But again, that's uh, something that uh, hopefully will be a welcomed addition to the community. Um, the, the other couple of updates I have for you, uh, Monday's gonna be a, a, a busy day for us. We have uh, an annual inspection for a couple of things on site due to some maintenance things, the underground storage tanks. You'll see a surveyor here, most likely outside. You'll also see uh, a couple of land surveyors. So I I'm sure you all know who I'm speaking about. It's the, the people with the tripods taking measurements and things of that nature. Um, we have some, some, uh, some things that we need to do for the city. And so you'll see two, maybe three individuals out probably for the majority of the day on Monday outside of East Castle Place. They won't be inside, but you will see them taking measurements and things of that nature. Again, we're working through that with the city of, of Milwaukee. So don't be alarmed. Um, but again, that's what they're there for. So I wanted to give you an update there as well. Um, the food and beverage program uh, has received a, a lot of questions uh, to both Carlos and I. I know a couple of you have, have been able to sit down with me and kind of walk through those. Um, I, I can tell you that I have, it, right now it's more of a 60-40, 60% really enjoy the opportunity to, to utilize a new program and 40% are still adjusting to it. Um, may not agree with it, um, but again that's something that um, we felt uh, from uh, your food and beverage committee that had discussion about it over really the last six eight to eight months um, uh, of wanting to move forward with this point system. Again, the point system is set up to, to provide flexibility and I know that flexibility isn't fully implemented because the bistro is not open at this time. But at the same time, um, Carlos is vigilant in, in monitoring those bills, uh, or bills rather, in monitoring the point system that are allotted to you. I know a lot of individuals are, are relating this to a cash type system. So I have $650 and if I use it, great. If I don't, I'm gonna lose it. Or if I go over, it's gonna be dollar for dollar. 
So we've always set the program up to provide our contractual obligation to you as residents to provide that meal per day. Um, that meal per day is a soup salad, an entree, a drink. All that should be able to be had within that 20 to 22 point range. Now again, some individuals have said, well, this is great. I can do, get lunch and I can get dinner and still not have to pay $11 at the end of the month for that lunch. Um, because again, I, I'm able to do that. Others are saying, well, I don't think that I'll be able to get what I want um, because I'm going to pay more um, because it is a dollar for dollar. I want you to be patient. Um, we don't have the actual data to show who's going over, if our points are allotted correctly, um, if residents are ordering appropriately. I do want you to continue ordering, as Carlos said as well, ordering what you want. Um, again, I, I think we've built the program to allow for that. Um, and so I hope, hope that you're able to do that. Again, this is our, we're in day 10 of, of the program. Um, we, we need to give it time. I know change is not easy. Again, Carlos and I have the kind of the, and, and residents, uh, have, uh, spoken, you know, giving this really a real chance. Um, but changes will happen along the way. Uh, again, the last thing, uh, Carlos or I want to do is to be a detriment to you. Um, this isn't a money maker. This isn't a budgetary uh, issue or, or response or Tyler and the board trying to save money. That's not it at all. I promise you that. Um, it's really set up so that we can provide additional flexibility. When the bistro is open, I don't want you to have to pay you know, cash out of your pocket, but rather use your amenity that you have in the food and beverage program. I also know that the food and beverage program potentially hasn't met your expectations or what you're used to. Obviously, we're doing takeout right now due to the pandemic. Um, and, and that means that food may come up a little cold. That may mean that you know what you thought you were getting didn't come. But again, this system really allows us to fine tune that because the details are really the proof is in the pudding. Um, so those details have to be entered. The tickets have to come to you. Um, and so again, I, I want that continued feedback. Carlos wants that continued feedback um, so that we can uh, do our best. Again, um, we're here for you. Um, we're, we're doing everything we can uh, from, from our staff in the kitchen um, to provide the best meal possible. Um, and we have some, uh, some work to do. And Carlos understands that, I understand that. Um, there's, there's work to do before this pandemic hit. There always is. Uh, we're trying to take care of 150 different uh, taste buds, so to speak, and uh, that's not an easy task, uh, as we still have to, to uh, I mean, from a campus standpoint, putting out over 600 meals a day. So, again, I share that with you not to uh, be the woe is me car, but I share that with you to, to ask, and ask for your continued feedback, both positive and negative. Uh, let Carlos know, let me know. Uh, happy to have those conversations with you um, in, in understanding the reasons behind the, the why. And so um, the why again is flexibility. The why is, is to enhance the program. Um, and although it's early on and maybe we haven't seen that, um, that's really the long-term effect. Um, I also know that part of it is, um, you know, to, to remain, um, you know, uh, with, with, with those residents that have wanted it. Um, and I know that uh, there are those that haven't wanted it and are very much opposed to it. Um, and I have those that are very much for it. And so again, we're trying to balance that, that fun gray area as well. Um, what else is on my list here? Surveyors, inspection. Oh, um, the last piece, I, I just want to give a, a quick note. Um, Barbara Hill uh, and, and Don Herrick, our new board, or not board, I'm sorry, resident council chairman, and, and Barbara Hill has taken on the task of, of the Employee Appreciation Fund. Um, obviously, Mike Breaver is partnering with that just from a, a tracking standpoint, but truly this is a resident initiative. So it has to be resident driven. It is completely voluntary, but it is the Employee Appreciation Fund that we do on an annual basis. Last year was your best year ever. I think we raised over $60,000. Staff were able to come away with essentially uh, an additional weeks of pay. Uh, and the staff were very, very appreciative of that. Um, and they're appreciative for anything that they do receive. Um, and I, I believe that uh, a few of you, and I'm, 
have reached out and said, Tyler, there's I, I have a little concern about this year. I, I don't know if we're, we uh, are raising enough or, or we have enough participation. And so I, I think my, uh, Barbara and Mike and, and Don are going to get together and, and kind of put together kind of just an update um, for you and at the State of the Castle next week when we film that and show that. Um, I think you'll have more information regarding that. The stats, I talked to Mike yesterday, currently we have 30 residents uh, that have given to the Employee Appreciation Fund. A little bit more behind of where we were last year at this time uh, from Mike's data. But again, I also understand the times. And so again, this is a voluntary program. This isn't Tyler saying to our residents, you have to give, give, give. Uh, again, it is a voluntary program. So give what you feel is right, participate if you would like. It is greatly appreciated. Our staff do work diligently, and uh, this <laughs> this year more than ever have been uh, through uh, some interesting times, and I know um, always appreciate that. So I only share that with you um, because uh, I've had a couple residents reach out and say, Tyler, can you please just, just give us an update um, and uh, maybe give a, a shout out. And so that's my shout out. Again, that Employee Appreciation Fund is only for our elderly staff members, so the servers in the kitchen um, and the cooks that are cooking, uh, the CNAs that are taking care of the residents, uh, as well as that nursing team, the community life team. The directors do not receive that, are not in that pool. Um, they are um, you know, taken care of a, a different way. Um, and so again, I want you to know that your funds are going directly to those elderly staff members that are providing that direct care and direct service to you. So um, that's uh, that's the update there. Um, that's the coffee with up uh, coffee with update. The coffee with Tyler update. Let's try that again. The coffee with Tyler update. Maybe I need a little bit more of that. Um, Hunter uh, is going to be six weeks this week. Um, still has his days and nights mixed up, so he's keeping mom and dad up at night. Uh, but uh, coffee is our new best friend. It always has been. But again, I think I mentioned last week. Uh, but he's doing well. Um, you know, he's growing. He's he's doing everything he's supposed to. Uh, we have a checkup appointment next on Friday, and so I will be out of the office on Friday. Lindsay will be here. Your director team will be here. Um, so again, the community will continue to be supported, but I look forward to seeing how much my little guy uh, weighs, how much he's grown, and uh, making sure the doctor says he's doing everything he's supposed to, because from all looks of it, he's a healthy baby boy, and uh, that's all I can ask. It's all I can ask is it's truly a blessing, um, even at 2.30 in the morning when I'm up uh, trying to rock him back to sleep. Um, something I... You know, uh, never thought I would experience, and I'm truly blessed that I am. So, thank you for letting me take that moment to share with you on a personal note um, our uh, our hunter update. Um, I know I talk with Anna quite a bit. Wes is uh, growing like a weed as well, and so uh, there's a lot of little ones running around uh, the the various uh, places outside of East Castle Place. So. Um, with that, uh, if you need help getting in contact with your loved ones via FaceTime, Zoom, um, let us know. We're here to help you too, uh, to set that up. I know it's tough, uh, but we'll get through this. We have to. Um, and uh, together we will remain East Castle Place strong. And so with that, I'll sign off with a sip. Thanks for joining me this morning. I hope everybody stays well. Stay positive um, and be well. We're here for you. We'll get through this together. All right. With that, take care. Enjoy the rest of the day. All right. Take care, everybody.